As you're developing your packaging equipment, you sometimes wonder whether it's better to use pneumatic motion or servo motion in your machine. Whether you're designing a standalone case packer or a full-blown monoblock filling line, there are applications which are better suited for pneumatic motion and others better suited for servo motion. We sometimes see customers who try to overutilize one technology based on where their expertise is or where they have a good relationship with an existing vendor. By doing this, they create an underperforming machine that might not meet their budget requirements. To talk to you about when, where, and why to use servo or pneumatic motion, we have experts from our fluid and motion control business, as well as our machine automation solutions business. Hi, my name is Chris Noble, Business Development Manager and IoT Consultant for Emerson Eventix. What I'm about to show you today is a system technology we call servo pneumatics, which is widely used in packaging industry today. The premise of servo pneumatic systems, as you're about to see, is a happy meeting between full servo control and stepper control with the compliance and flexibility of a smaller footprint of pneumatics. Because many machines already have pneumatic components and utilize industrial communication protocols, pneumatic position is highly effective for machine builders and CPGs. Helps you to maintain a budget and reduce machine development time. Let's walk through the system together as I roll through the different areas that make up servo pneumatic systems. Let's start with the unit on the upper left-hand corner, which is commonly referred to as an FRL. In this case, it's a filter regulator assembly. It's used for conditioning the air quality before we put it into the servo pneumatic system. What you're seeing here is a manual ball valve that you can lock the air out with, so it completely cuts the system off for safety, along with a particulate filter unit to help you clean the air before it enters the system, and lastly, a regulator to be able to regulate the pressure coming into your machine. That pressure from the filter regulator unit then leads into the proportional valves located here on our servo pneumatic display. These EDO2s, also known as E2P valves, apply pressure to both sides of the cylinder simultaneously, thus allowing you to control force, speed, and position of your actuator. The PE5s we have mounted here are digital pressure sensors that allow you that live information that you can read from the proportional valves as you're consistently regulating pressure on both sides of the piston. Below that, we have the actuator, which is a hygienic designed actuator. It's an ICSL cylinder, fully IP69K compliant, with a built-in measurement sensor allowing you to pick up the piston position, completing the closed loop system back to our controller. And our controller is called the AES, also known as the Advanced Electronic System, located here in the control unit that allows you to communicate directly to your PLC via multiple field bus protocols and contains a PID module that's in charge of controlling all the proportional valves and the in-feed information. When given information from your PLC on position or force, the AES will take inputs and send outputs to the proportional valves, driving the cylinders or the piston specifically to a predetermined position based on your programming and positional needs. Hi, I'm Alec Granger, product manager with the machine automation solution business with Emerson. Now I want to talk to you guys about the motion demo. Starting off here, you see our RX3i PLC with the PMM345 motion controller, all in the one same backplane. With a system like this, the PMM345 can communicate directly over the backplane to the RX3i CPU. Also, with the fact that the backplane powers the unit and allows for the communication, you have a fully integrated solution. Whether you have four axes or 40, each PMM345 can communicate with up to four axes and you can expand them down the line and they will automatically synchronize and communicate with each other. Looking at the motion demo specifically, we have two demo cases here. Each demo case has one of our pack motion servo drives and a pack motion servo motor. We also have one of our FTB modules. This allows for remote I.O. that's connected directly over fiber to the PMM345 motion controller. The reason this is consistent and, and ultimately significant is that the FTB module connected directly to the pack motion PMM345 allows the PMM345 to handle it directly rather than going through the PLC. This ensures that the I.O is running at the speed of your motion path and your motion positioning. So looking at this demo case a little bit more in depth, we have some switches up here and the way we have set this up is that first switch turns on the first axis, second one turns on the second one. Now if I flip this axis here, it will actually start the second axis going at a 4x speed of the first axis. 
Now if I flip this one here, it'll ultimately have the second axis half speed of whatever it was doing before. So this is just showing the capabilities roughly of what we can do here in our solution. Emerson understands that you're looking for a partner. We understood that, we've taken that into account, and we've built our solution from a motion perspective around that. So from a flexibility perspective, you're looking for a solution that can help you do more things, right? Be flexible to meet your changing market needs. Then from a scalability perspective, you're looking for a solution that can scale up in access to handle the number of axes that your customers need, right? You're not always building the same solution over and over again. The thing that we've done from a motion control perspective, with a PMM 345 handling motion entirely in itself, it can do a one millisecond path planning loop, a 500 microsecond position loop, and a 250 microsecond communication loop for your communication networks, for your over Ethercat. And that capability never changes regardless of access count. Whether you're doing one axis or 40, you have no performance degradation over your solution. One of the other things that's really nice with the PMM345 servo motion controller is that you can change motion profiles on the fly. That allows you to have increased machine utilization, allowing you to change from doing a filling application that's doing something entirely different from something else in a much faster time. And that's really how we handle that from PMM side and from a motion and servo side. Now, Chris, what do you want to say to them around the pneumatic side? Yeah, I think your, uh, your comment on motion profiles on the fly is excellent. I think that's a true testament on uh, equipment needs as you're trying to improve OEE and throughput on systems. Uh, we add on to that as well with the addition of intelligence that we can put on le old legacy equipment that can, again, communicate back to the RX3i. Expanded PID modules, so the servo pneumatic system that we have allows you to put up to eight PID modules for eight different axes of servo pneumatic motion. That allows you for amortized costs coming off of the node uh, as a one-time cost, and then its uh, expandability uh, decreases as, as, we, as we continue. And then lastly, expanded decentralized I.O. for machine control and feedback. So this is another area where conventional pneumatics on a machine is set up with a, a junction box with terminal strips on the inside. The fact that we can actually go in, make an upgrade, plug into uh, a PLC via multiple field bus protocols, and now bring that ability for improving localized I.O., improving uh, safety ratings with IP65 products, getting away from more traditional IP40, and in some cases, even moving away from 110 volt now to 24 volt, again, thus increasing your safety in that area of the, of the system. Downtime can really hurt your business. We understand that at Emerson. So we understand you also got to look at downtime from two perspectives, both unplanned and planned. From an unplanned perspective, Emerson builds all its products, including our Pack Motion series of servo motion products, around reliability so that you can have a reliable solution in the market both today and tomorrow. And how we do reliability is ultimately around that fully integrated approach. If you can simplify the architecture, both from a software and hardware perspective, you can ultimately reduce the downtime. But also by allowing for the changing over of your motion profiles, that reduces your plan of downtime. Because ultimately, if you're able to get your solution up and running again with the next level of application you're trying to do, you can have increased machine utilization and ultimately limit the waste that you're producing. And building off of that, uh, again, some of the on-the-fly on profiles, uh, getting away from uh, unplanned downtime to plan, planned downtime, we look at minimizing tooling changeover, the fact that we can add some of the flexibility uh, into hard tooling by keeping it as flexible tooling with more of the focus on the actual tooling fixtures that need to be, need to be changed out on a machine. So it reduces A, the number of people that you may need for a tooling changeover, two, it, re it reduces the amount of parts or pieces that are needed in a system for that changeover. Uh, additionally, when it comes to reduced downtime, the built-in intelligence, going back to visualization, uh, that we do offer, say, in your I.O. blocks, Conventionally, you've had to go back to an HMI to look at an input or an output to understand if I'm actually getting a read off of a proximity switch, as an example. By giving you local visualization at an I.O. block, we can give you deterministic ability. Is it a green status? Is it an orange status? Is it a red status? Which means I know directly in that area of the machine 
that there's a problem with that specific sensor that's feeding back to the I.O. block. Now looking at a real application, a filling machine, well, there's obviously many applications in packaging, but filling machines I think help to visualize how we can help you from a solution perspective. So filling obviously is around accuracy, it's around precision. The PMM345 motion controller has 64-bit floating point accuracy for its calculations. So it ultimately means that positioning the bottles, positioning the heads, all those things like that can be handled with the utmost of precision. Now also with the PMM345 you have patented jerk-free motion technology. What that means is that you're able to get to the final motion position jerk-free, faster, settle on those final positionings, which will allow you to reduce the waste and increase your ultimate throughput of your machine. Now, Chris, how about you talk about from it from a filling head example? Yeah, so filling machines, uh, I like the fact that I think Emerson has really specialized and, and looked at a niche area of jerk-free technology. Uh, by adding servo pneumatics to an existing system you have today, you're getting away from more traditional bang-bang type uh, cylinder technology that may be there that's controlled by a flow control. Uh, you get away from air over oil type combinations which can be messy but then also change over time as you are introduced to air bubbles in the system. So as a filling head example for volumetric control, if it was a yogurt application, I might have different diameter cups that I'm dealing with. Those diameter cups require different volumes. With the technology of servo pneumatic it allows us to get away from that tooling changeover that's required to go from different stroke cylinders for different volumes and now stay with one max stroke actuator that appeases to multiple uh, volume control requirements across the board. And so by going back to changing on the fly technology, as that recipe changes for that product, we can then go directly to the PID system that we have built into our AES system and now change the stroke, change the clean and place position for that particular actuator, which would improve the overall, again, throughput and intelligence locally on the machine. Emerson's broad range of electric and pneumatic motion technologies can help you optimize your design while achieving your cost and productivity targets. By utilizing one partner with expertise across motion technologies, you can trust that your machine will be designed using the right motion technology. This will help you improve your machine performance, drive productivity, and reduce your development time.